of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. She will join us remotely online. It is our pleasure to welcome her to our debate. I would also like to welcome Barry Andrews, member of the European Parliament, and uh, Rafael Traskowski, chair of the ENVI Commission, and also Ricardo Rio, who is the rapporteur of the opinion as part of this debate. The opinion is on the progress in the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. Welcome, sir. I would also like to acknowledge the presence among us of His Excellency Ambassador Onu Obina of Nigeria is uh, joining us for this debate. Welcome, sir. It's a pleasure and an honor to have you with us. Now we're going to proceed, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to give the floor for 10 minutes. More or less. Does, oh, so they that, don't means, show that means five minutes. Madam Deputy Secretary General, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you and I can see you. Welcome. Thank you. Madam, Thank you. you have the floor for five minutes. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to address the Committee of the Regions and to help renew the impetus on implementing the Sustainable Development Goals at regional and local levels. I'd like to commend your commitment to prepare and present the first European Union voluntary reviews on the SDGs this year. This will happen, this will be an important opportunity to take stock of the EU's internal and external implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals and to look at best practices. From your work on climate and biodiversity to your innovative partnerships and your leadership on data and monitoring, I commend Europe's commitment to a sustainable continent in a sustainable world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's no secret that halfway through the implementation of the SDGs, we are not on track. After decades of progress, key indicators on hunger and poverty are going into reverse. The climate emergency is accelerating and inequalities are growing. The world is still recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic socioeconomic impact. The war in Ukraine has now brought enormous suffering and heartbreak to Europe and turbocharged global crises in access to food, energy and finance. We urgently need to redouble our efforts on sustainable development and the 2030 Agenda. As members of the European Committee of Regions, you have an essential role in bringing the SDGs down to earth and making them real and concrete in people's lives. You have a unique contact with people and communities at local and regional levels. Your engagement with underrepresented groups, including women and girls, young people, and those who are isolated or marginalized can empower them and bring the SDGs to life. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, if we're to achieve the SDGs, they must deliver for people in cities and regions. The UN's voluntary local reviews showcase inspiring examples of action from Argentina to Japan via Hawaii and Finland. Local action is essential to mobilize key constituencies, including civil society, the private sector and academia, all critical to SDG implementation. Local partnerships can spark innovative new ideas, solutions that accelerate progress. Cities and regions in the European Union can also play an important role beyond Europe's borders through your learning exchanges and partnerships with local governments in other countries around the world. Last October, I had the pleasure of opening the local 2030 Secretariat in Bilbao. I once again thank the Basque authorities and the government of Spain for their strong support. Local 2030 is a strategic network that aims to help local and regional leaders around the world to better share practices, implement strategies to advance the SDGs. And I'd like to invite you to participate in the Local 2030 and lend your support. Ladies and gentlemen, at the global level, there's growing understanding that the challenges of our age, from climate crisis to dangers posed by unregulated technologies, cannot be solved by governments alone. 
The Secretary General has set out proposals for an inclusive multilateralism that benefits the insights and approaches of local and regional governments, civil society, the private sector, academia and more. We're determined to amplify the voices of local governments, young people, women at all levels of decision making. In closing, I urge you all to play a full part in the SDG Summit in New York in September. This will be the centerpiece of our work on sustainable development this year, an opportunity to agree on transformative practices to rescue the SDGs and get back on track for implementation by 2030. Policies and initiatives that have been tried and tested by cities and regions can catalyze the transformation that will save and improve lives and livelihoods around the world. We count on you to bring your strong engagement, creative ideas and energies to the SDG Summit. I wish you a productive session. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Madam Deputy Secretary General. Uh, we know you have a very tight schedule, but uh, we invite you to stay with us as long as you can. And now it's my pleasure to give the floor to the uh, Member of the European Parliament, Barry Andrews. Sir, you have the floor for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Excellency, uh, Deputy Secretary General, uh, Rapporteur and colleagues, it's a great honour to be here with you uh, this afternoon at this plenary session to discuss uh, this critical issue at a critical time for the Sustainable Development Goals. As the Deputy Secretary General just noted, uh, the SDGs are, are not on track, and this is a pivotal year for the Sustainable Development Goals. So this debate could not be more timely. Each of us in this room, in my opinion, has a vital role to play in shaping the future of our continent and the world. Agenda 2030 for, and the 17 Sustainable Development Goals are simply the only collective and comprehensive vision we have for a better and more sustainable future. They're the only internationally agreed framework for sustainable and fair development. And if we don't pursue this agenda, it will come at a great cost. In this era of polycrisis, of unprecedented uncertainty, we must cling on to the SDGs for dear life. As we approach the midpoint of Agenda 2030, it is clear, as the Deputy Secretary General just said, that the SDGs are in danger. Most recent studies show that globally the SDGs are regressing. The pandemic has had devastating impacts, such as pushing over 90 million people into extreme poverty over the last three years, SDG 1. Inequality is on the rise. Fewer people have access to education and to health care. The record temperatures reached this summer were a reminder that we are well and truly on the way to exceeding temperatures of 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Mm -hmm. And as the events in Afghanistan and Iran have shown, gender equality is a battle that we must keep fighting for years to come. The challenges that we face are complex and pressing, from the growing threat of climate change to the increasing inequality and poverty, and conflict and instability, to the rapid erosion of the planet's biodiversity. And if we are to achieve a better future for all, we must act with urgency and determination. This requires a strong and visionary leadership, and the EU must take a leading role in implementing the SDGs in the same way that the European Union took a leading role in crafting the Sustainable Development Goals in 2015. The EU has a unique responsibility and opportunity to show leadership. Eight years after the adoption of the goals, the EU still has no strategy, and I repeat, the EU has no strategy for implementing the SDGs. This means the EU has no targets, it has no financing plan, and is it any wonder then that progress in the EU is at a standstill despite our wealth of resources and capacities? With this Committee of the Region's opinion, there is now a chorus of voices singing from the same hymn sheet. Citizens agree, civil society and the private sector agree, as do the member states at all levels of government. It is high time that the EU adopts an overarching high-level strategy to implement the SDGs, one that is ambitious, integrated, 
and inclusive and one that brings together all actors to deliver the change that we need. This strategy must be grounded in a clear understanding of the interlinked and interconnected nature of the Sustainable Development Goals and it must be based on a comprehensive and integrated approach to sustainable development. It must recognise the importance of economic, environmental and social sustainability. It must also recognise the leading role that the EU must play in the global efforts to implement the Sustainable Development Goals. The fact that the EU will present its first voluntary review at this year's HLPF will be a strong demonstration of the EU's commitments to the goals. This is the first international organisation to do a voluntary review uh, to the HLPF. But without a strategy, we cannot make meaningful progress. And this too sends a message to the international community. I would like to commend Rapporteur Ricardo Rio and the Shadow Rapporteurs for this tremendous work. This opinion is informative, insightful and highly political. I would simply urge the European Commission to take heed of this message. I wonder how many times in history has it happened that the Council of the European Union, the European Parliament, the European Economic and Social Committee and the Committee of the Regions all came to the same conclusions. So let us rise to this challenge. Let us demonstrate the leadership and the ambition that we need to achieve a better, more sustainable future for all. And let us work together across borders and across sectors to deliver the change that we need. Thank you. Thank you. Now the floor goes to the Rapporteur, Ricardo Rio, three minutes. Dear President, distinguished UNAM Deputy Secretary General, Honourable Member of the European Parliament, dear colleagues, I would like to thank very much Ms. Mohamed and MEP Andrews for their participation and support today. I think that the presence of the Deputy Secretary General is the biggest boost to the idea that we need to strengthen the localization of the SDGs that we have been advocating here at the Committee of the Regions for a couple of years now. As uh, some of you may know, this is the second opinion in which I am rapporteur in the latest years on the SDGs. And uh, in the latest months, the evolution of the fulfillment of the goals what didn't improve, it had a setback with all the circumstances that we had to deal with, the energy crisis, the war in Ukraine, and the um, problems with inflation. And uh, if it wasn't so bad uh, as uh, it will be expected under these circumstances, it was because of the commitment of the local and regional authorities that are doing an amazing job all over Europe. And this is why, in my uh, opinion, this one that we are discussing today, I have two main priorities. The first one is that we need to boost the implementation of the SDGs within the EU as there is a real danger that we missed the 2030 mark. I am the mayor of the city of Praga and I have been using for almost all my mandates the SDGs to improve the lives of my inhabitants. Talking about the sustainable development goals is talking about the quality of our life for our citizens. And I am a fervent believer and, uh, of the added value of this tool and this is why I am also championing them at the EU level with your support. Many cities and regions are using them as a recovery strategy. Many city networks such as Zero Cities, CMR and others are supporting this approach. And OECD has been working a lot with the core to enhance the role of the local and regional authorities in these matters. Member states and EU institutions must follow this lead. I have a change with the European Commission and they confirmed that they use the SDGs, but they need to monitor them more accurately, use clear targets and use regions and cities work to improve the work that is done at European level. And for that, I also bring you my second priority, to make sure that the position of the EU is as strong as possible in the United Nations. In July, the EU is engaging all stakeholders and walks the talk on SDGs by producing her, its first European voluntary review. And it is the, of the most importance that this shows all the work that has been done in Europe. To do this, I have worked with the European Commission to include the efforts of regions and cities in localizing SDGs. And this is a win-win for both the European Commission and us. A comprehensive review will help the EU delegation to be credible when it still encourages other countries to get back on track on SDGs in New York next July. And I also have been working with the ENVID chair, Rafał Trzaskowski, to uh, obviously bring this perspective of the European Committee of the Regions to the work that has been done by the European Union. And I will finally like to thank not only my experts, but all the ones that contributed to making this uh, opinion, such as the Basque Country, the Flanders Regions, the Helsinki Region, the six Finnish big cities, Piemonte, Strasbourg, and many more. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Ricardo Rio, now the floor goes, now the floor goes to uh, the Envy Commission Chair, Rafael Traskowski. You have the floor for three minutes. Muito obrigado, President. Uh, as was said by Barry uh, Andrews, uh, sustainable development goals are under attack uh, by the reality that we live in. Uh, and uh, as always, uh, as with uh, the priorities of the European Union, uh, also sustainable development goals cannot be realized without local and regional government because we are responsible for implementing many of them as we are responsible for implementing EU priorities. And now the two uh, things are happening obviously simultaneously because SDGs are included uh, in EU priorities. That's why we need to be involved. In 2022, the midterm updates of remits of uh, Committee of the Regions Commissions included SDGs at a global level as a new responsibility of ENVE. We are happy to cooperate with the Econ Commission, and we've talked about it with uh, the rapporteur and uh, the chair, uh, that we will, of course, cooperate and uh, lead our work on EU's SDGs governance and implementation. And what is the most important thing is that, of course, our voice should be heard also at a global level, because, as I've said, implementation is done uh, locally, and therefore the design of these policies also needs to take into account the input of bodies such as ours. The successful uh, participation of Committee of the Regions Delegations in Climate COP27 in Egypt and at the Biodiversity COP15 in Mo Montreal, where we were explicitly mentioned as one of the key partners for the implementation of the plan of action of the global biodiversity framework needs to be complemented, of course, also with a proactive uh, engagement of the Committee of the Regions to discuss SDGs. Are the SDGs a new fashionable topic for us in ENVE? Well, if we go back in time, pre-COVID times, we can see that the Committee of the Regions resolution, the Green Deal, in partnership with local and regional authorities from uh, December 2019, underlines that of course, SDGs should be an instrument to achieve the Paris Agreement, fully implementing the UN 2030 agenda. And as I've said, since uh, the European Commission's president political program integrates SDGs uh, into all Commission proposals, uh, therefore our role uh, should be even more uh, pronounced. Terming climate and environmental challenges into opportunities across all policy areas and making the transition just and inclusive for all are, of course, the objectives of the Green Deal and also are in SDGs implementation. That's why the ENVA Commission is working in view of the UN High-Level Political Group on Sustainable Development in New York in July, where the EU will present their voluntary review, and that's why we should be there and our voice should be heard. Importantly, the Commission's commitment to implement the SDGs at EU level through a comprehensive whole-of-government approach what implies also the regional and local government. And finally, the SDG's regional dimension, also called localization, is of Thank capital you. importance, as the achievement of 65% of the goals lies with us. Thank you very much. Muito Thank obrigado. you. Thank you, Rafael. Now the floor goes to member Yelena Drehanin for two minutes. Uh, thank you for participation here today, Madam Mohammed and uh, Mr. Andrews and everybody else. We in the EPP group are really happy to having this opportunity of presenting our views. Europe and other democratic countries stand today at the crossroad of choosing the sustainable path for our planet, our values and presenting our views. Europe and other democratic countries stand today at a crossroad of choosing the sustainable path for our planet, our values, and overall well-being. Our core values, such as democracy, human rights, and the rule of law, are still a reality in some societies, but not for everyone, as you mentioned earlier, Mr. Andrews. These values and even the sustainability of our societies are threatened in many different ways, such as by wars, increasing poverty, climate change, with even more fatal, fatal natural disasters, the energy crisis, which worsens social inequality within and between countries, and society undermined by fake news and hate speeches. We are here today to join action and collect our strength to fight these challenges together, 
by agreeing on to work for more effective cooperation and better coordinated actions, both between and within countries, at all levels. We need in particular a joint response to the crisis situation, but also enable the work of building of more resilient, inclusive and participatory societies in the long term. The UN Sustainable Development Goals are what we have agreed upon, but our way of reaching them are likely a bumpy road ahead. And the EPP group wants to send the message that a stronger multi-level governance will give us a lot more effective and better coordinated actions to fight these challenges. And EPP would also like in particular to stress the Thank need you. for better links between the UN goals and the recovery resilient plans because the funding is uh, just like 47% of all. Thank you. Thank you. Now the floor goes to member Marku Markula for two minutes. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, let me add one important di dimension to what the Mayor Rafael Traskovsky and Mayor Rock Ricardo Rio already s stated. So we, the political leaders, we need to take implementing SDGs into our hearts and into our brains. And that is linked closely to what Madam Drenjanin said about the multi-level governance. So uh, it is well recognized uh, in the EU, but not in implemented throughout the whole Europe yet. So let me stress that the importance of multi-level governance uh, is, needs to be inside each organization, political level experts, citizens, and so on. To make implementation SDGs a crucial topic for all policy levels uh, inside regional councils, inside cities, uh, where I now operate a lot, so it requires a mission, a clear target stage being committed by political leaders, a clear target-oriented roadmap, uh, an action plan with uh, measurable scheduled priorities, data, citizens' uh, participation. And let me add, throughout all of this is learning. We all are learning there, and uh, in that we need the cities, need to be at the U with the UN and other, other bodies in sense-making. What does this mean and why that is so relevant for every human being? And on that, we definitely collaborate with you and family, with the Commission and the European Parliament and others. Thank you. Thank you. Dario Nardella, the floor is yours for four minutes. Thank you, President. Thank you to the rapporteur. At the EU... Ukraine summit last week, the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, acknowledged that cities play an important role in supporting their Ukrainian twin towns in planning re rebuilding over the, the long term. At the same time, our towns and cities are in the front line of managing the energy crisis, supporting firms and citizens and the transition to clean energy. This is vital if we're to make a reality of the European Green Deal and climate neutrality goals for 2050. Many of our towns and cities have set climate neutrality goals that are actually more ambitious than our national governments. And so, speaking as a member of the Socialists and Democrats group, and the chair of Eurocities, I give my full endorsement to the important assertions made in the opinion prepared by our colleague Ricardo Rio. First of all, the major challenges such as the pandemic and the energy crisis shouldn't lead to a levelling down in delivering the SDGs. On the contrary, the crises we're facing must be used to speed up and, and strengthen the transition to this development model. Secondly, the 2030 Agenda for the Sustainable Development Goals is a useful, solid tool in helping offsetting possible imbalances and inconsistencies that we have to acknowledge between the large number of frameworks that have to apply at every level of government. 
the Paris Agreement, the Union's Green Deal and the new urban agenda. Making a reality of the 2030 agenda will depend to a great extent on the results achieved by towns and cities. Because as the rapporteurs have pointed out, it's in the cities and in the metropolitan areas as well as smaller towns that the challenges surrounding energy, mobility and food supplies, the circular economy and the digital transition as well as social cohesion all come together and have to be tackled by means of shared political solutions. Without full, tangible co-involvement of daily life on the ground in the cities, these goals will never be achieved. Working together on the SDGs means that we also need to activate a, an instrument that will allow towns and cities to have a more holistic development model. Many local areas across Europe have adopted SDGs as a cornerstone of their reference framework as they pursue sustainable urban development. With a view to moving ever further along that course of action and bringing together action at every level of governance, we support the setting up of an alliance of regions and cities for the Sustainable Development Goals, which can rely on the Committee of the Regions. Russian aggression against Ukraine and the energy crisis show how important it is, indeed I would say how necessary it, it is to take local action to ensure that the 2030 agenda can be achieved. The worsening of the crisis has led to a general rethinking of urban life, mobility and energy consumption. The social context is a source of concern. The rich have got richer and the poor have got poorer. Thank you, President. Thank you so much. The floor goes to Member Maria Elorza Zubiria for three minutes. Arracha Deon, President. Lenik eta behin, rinu taldearen izenean, ongi etorria eta eskerrak eman nahi dizu. Thank you. Rinu would like to welcome and thank Ms. Amina Mohamed and thank her for sharing this space with us. We share the philosophy and the methodology of the Agenda 2030. It sets a roadmap to move towards the SDGs, bringing together economic growth, social inclusion and protecting the environment. Sometimes those seem completely incompatible. But what we have is a proposal which really reflects our current situation. Since their approval in 2015, the UN have asked regional governments to put the 2030 agenda, agenda at the heart of their work, adapting it to their reality. Often, uh, regional governments do have um, actions which are very much aligned uh, with sustainable development. And the Basque government called upon uh, the need to uh, develop a plan which ran till 2030, um, a multi-level plan. Uh, we looked at the possibility of issuing sustainable bonds as well as other measures. And now what we're doing is looking to explore the benefits of multi-level, multi-stakeholder multi -stakeholder government to ensure the um, inclusive implementation of the 17 SDGs. We believe that SDGs require us to focus on what can be specifically achieved. And we can give you five examples this year uh, which we are working on which could be useful. Firstly, introduce the SDG uh, principles into the local government management. We have a panel of 53 indicators uh, which assess uh, policy for this. Uh, we also propose the integration of the 2030 agenda as a tool for assessment and identification of uh, work to be done in organisations and businesses. And this year, 
we are establishing in the Basque Country uh, the initiative um, supported by the Deputy Secretary General in which the government of our region is participating, is going to develop apprenticeships so that the SDGs can be mainstreamed uh, in all territories and uh, communities. I'd like to take the opportunity I have today to thank Ms. Mohammed for her trust in putting this initiative together. For two and a half minutes. Caro Secretario Generale, caro Presidente. Secretary General and President, achieving the sustainable development goals of the United Nations is something that can only happen with consultation and coordination of the various levels of government and civil society, with particular attention being devoted to involving local and regional authorities. The Veneto region has not dodged making a contribution to this important collective challenge. In 2018, the Veneto Regional Council, that's my honour to head, together with the International Federation for um, Family Development, presented the Venice Charter in New York, in the United Nations. In line with UN Sustainable Development Call Number 11, which calls to ensure that cities are inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. The Venice Charter puts families and their rights at the heart of planning and management of cities and territories, stressing the need to devote greater attention to the most vulnerable citizens. Drafted by a, a panel of multidisciplinary experts, promoted at the UN, the... Um, Education Social Committee, it's reviewed every year with an eye to the rights of families. We have to support vulnerable groups in line with the goals set out in the UN's Agenda 2030. In a society such as ours in Europe, where the birth rate is falling significantly and ageing is increasing, investing in family policies is the best investment you could make in the future that any level of government could make. The Venice Declaration brings together local um, authorities' contributions and sets out an inventory of best practice by the, the signatories with an exchange of the results obtained. This feeds into the commitment of local authorities to make ethical choices in uh, providing services to family groups. The particular um, attention to the vulnerable people with disabilities, older people and, and children. The signatures in include cities from Europe and, and um and South America, including Brazil and Mexico. Call to member Merichel Serrey Aleo for two minutes. Gracias, President del Comité de Thank you, President of the Committee of Regions. On behalf of the European Alliance Group, we think that this is a, a very pertinent debate, given that we have eight years remaining to make a reality of the SDGs. There's an environmental climate crisis and a social crisis on it an unprecedented scale on now that we can see across our territories, which is why we need greater efforts to the SDGs in public policy, which will bring about transformation with a systemic vision and true alliances with civil society, multi-level European and global governance. The Catalan government is, has been committed to the 2030 Agenda since it was adopted as a strategic framework, with the whole government signing up to the SDGs, bringing together strategies, plans, programmes and, and budgets adopted since 2015. This year, Catalonia will have its first follow-up report on the SDGs and in doing that, we rely on official statistics in Catalonia with two sets of indicators, one following the Eurostat methodology and the other the UN criteria. In the report, we will include views from civil society and local authorities, as well as 70 public and private bodies in the Catalonia 2030 alliance. 
We will bring together everything the government has done since the entry into force of the 2030 Agenda. For example, the strategic supply plan for uh, Catalonia, the maritime strategy, the adaptation strategy to climate change, uh, basic guaranteed incomes, and including SDGs in school curricula. There are items pending that we want to work on together across Europe. We welcome the fact that the European Union this year is tabling its report on the, the follow-up to the SDGs. We believe that this assessment and the lessons we can learn from this are vital if we're to move ahead towards a stronger, more integrated, fairer, more sustainable Europe. In Catalonia, we remain committed to that. Thank you. To member Una Power for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this is an incredibly important debate and opinion, and I thank Mr. Rio for his work on it and for supporting our amendments that we put forward as the Greens. The importance of LRAs in implementing the SDGs is incredibly significant. Um, as expressed in the opinion, the OCD uh, approximates that 65% of the SDG goals cannot be achieved without our involvement. And as Ms. Mohammed said, we are the ones with the practical hands-on work in this area, and we are the ones with the relationships with local citizens and stakeholders to pursue implementation of SDGs across society. But we must also, as the core, ensure that we cooperate with other institutions and organisations at national and European levels. Already great work has been done by organisations such as EuroCities, CEMR and Platformer with their members, and we should seek to cooperate with them and share learnings where possible. We must also remember that the SDGs are overarching. They are interwoven through policy areas and require a holistic approach in their implementation. Within the core, we need to continue our efforts on implementation of the SDGs, building on Mr. Rio's opinion passed last year and today's opinion, using these to inform our next steps. Given the expansive and interlinked nature of the SDGs, we need to ensure we incorporate them across all of our commissions and not silo them within one or two, because SDGs go beyond environment and energy and climate. Indeed, they cover societal fairness, quality of life, gender equality, health and justice, to name but a few. As acknowledged in the opinion and stated by Mr Andrews, there have been regrettable setbacks in achieving progress on the SDGs due to the various crises we've experienced in recent times. We need to find a way to prevent challenges from strolling progress. Indeed, SDGs ought to inform our responses to challenges we come up against, Thank underpinning you. both our immediate and recovery phases. Finally, SDGs, much like climate action, Thank cannot you. be put on the back burner when we face disruption because when we adopt them, that is what makes thank our you. societies more resilient. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm the one who thank you. Now the floor goes to our first Vice President, Apostolos Tsitsikostas, for three minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. President, dear Deputy Secretary General mm. of the United Nations, dear uh, colleagues. The SDGs are the foundation stone for addressing the current and the evolving crisis. The emergencies caused by the pandemic, indeed, and the war may have pushed a number of leaders to focus on the immediate consequences of the crisis, rather than focus on the more general picture. Unfortunately, the issues uh, that the SDGs intend to tackle did not disappear in the meantime. Resilience and recovery can only be achieved by addressing those issues now and here. And, of course, as the urgency and the localization of the actions are key. As a matter of fact, the, with regards to their wide-ranging responsibilities and their direct contact with citizens, local and regional authorities help in effectively and quickly implement our common goals. This is precisely why it is essential today to strengthen their governance, which has to be inclusive and multi-level, in order to create policy coherence and sustainable achievements on the ground. As living in an interconnected world, we all have a role to play in achieving these ambitious objectives. Local and regional political leaders promote awareness. We create incentives to encourage individuals and businesses to act in a more sustainable way. 
We develop local strategies uh, to reduce poverty, to improve health and protect the environment. We work with local businesses to promote green growth and invest in renewable energy infrastructure. We invest in education and training to equip citizens with the skills they need to take part in a green economy. This is why the localization of the SDG is key. The European Committee of the Regions uh, is committed to support, of course, all the local and regional governments in these efforts. And this includes the networks of cities and regions outside the European Union, such as Platforma, especially in Africa. But we also need to develop and help uh, the help of the United Nations, as I believe there is real room for improving our cooperation in this field in order to promote sustainability amongst local authorities. In this context, we are, for instance, willing to monitor the progress of the SDGs implementation at our level of governance. Now, conclusion, dear colleagues, it is also with an enhanced and active role of cities and regions locally that the SDGs can be achieved globally. By taking such a proactive approach, we can make a difference as we are ready to further work with the United Nations in order to localize the SDGs. Thank you. Thank you, Apostolos. Now the floor goes to Member Muterem Aras for one minute. Yeah, liebe Kollegen und Kollegen. So, colleagues, as we've heard, sustainability is extremely important, but there's a danger that during crisis times this uh, falls by the wayside. We need to be honest and uh, say that implementation of SDGs is not going as fast as it should. And we shouldn't say that Europe should continue to lead the way. We're saying it should start to lead the way because we have a lot of room for improvement. And the Greens have tabled a range of amendments. Uh, there was the OECD study was uh, quoted, says that 8% uh, eight, uh, eight of regions and uh, cities uh, pursue uh, these uh, aims. And you could say that 88% is very good, but if you tell the truth, there are only 22 regions in Europe. So if you do the math, the arithmetic, it's actually not very good at all. You have the floor for one minute. President, uh, colleagues, the Agenda 2030 provides a blueprint for a shared future. Uh, having overcome uh, the pandemic and looking at the war in Ukraine and the climate change, we need to have a bridge between European regions and state and private interests in Turing. What we have done is work towards energy transition, creating a green tech agencies, helping local communities in um, ordering and implementing European projects, uh, networking between the local and European level and the private and public sectors. But what we need really are people on the ground. It is the European people who will benefit from, from Agenda 2030. But in the day-to-day -day work, they're just considered uh, as the positive or negative effects of individual measures. Um, there needs to be integrated planning, and we need to see a, a watershed moment, not just in the policy that we're developing, but also in our communication strategy. Uh, annual report on the progress of 2030 is positive, but it's not useful if there's no methodological, meth methodical approach. Uh, here, there needs to be more work. Who goes to member Perez Garcia for one minute? De acuerdo con el Observatorio 2030. According to the uh, Ministry of State Affairs, the Agenda 2030, the Spanish government, and the Basque Country and, and Navarre are the, the, are the, the two regions with the best outcomes on SDG. The Spanish legislation 2022 helps to make the most of, of local, local efforts. 
in conjunction with the ministry, recognising Navarra as a, a leading region, bears uh, witness to the wide approach taken by the, the regional government and parliament. It's been working towards 2030 since 2016. In 2019, we started issuing sustainable national um, bonds. The, strat the green sustainability strategy for 2030 has been dealt with in an interdepartmental way. In the course of all our work, we seek to share with other regions in Europe. That's why we've been chosen for a pilot project in, 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 in Europe to get under the um, auspices of the Commission Parliament. In it, you have the floor. Dear Madam Deputy Secretary General, the SDGs may appear to be quite abstract for many regions, but in fact they are very concrete and they are part of our day-to-day -day agenda. We are implementing the SDGs without even noticing as we speak. The Committee of Regions usually calls for better involvement from the side of the key EU decision makers, but I would like to use this opportunity and appeal also to the United Nations to better involve regions and cities in the initiatives that are related to our activities. I especially welcome the preparation of the first Global State of Metropolis report by the UN Habitat on the Metropolitan Agenda, which is so crucial for achieving SDG 11, and I'm glad that Bratislava region is part of this report. It's tempting for everyone to strictly mind their own business, but improvement in interinstitutional exchange of views will multiply the results. Cities and regions will welcome more cooperation with and by the United Nations, also in the sustainable development. Your esteemed presence with us today is a step in the right direction. Thank, Thank you. you. Member Florian Schutz, the floor is yours for one minute. President, uh, General, Representative of the General Secretary, mentions in the sustainability goals were decided on, involved all the uh, regions and municipalities uh, together. And we've thought about how we could implement these objectives and what they mean to us, peace and prosperity, uh, how we could uh, sum this up. And we've taken the decision that the implementation strategy uh, should uh, and general uh, strategy should be um, adopted, focusing on resources and uh, standard of living. These are the mark, uh, salient points of the uh, strategy. Uh, we have tried uh, to involve all in the implementation of these goals. Thank you. You have the floor for one minute. Thank you. Madam uh, Deputy Secretary General, dear colleagues, I support this debate uh, on this topic uh, on SDGs because they are an important instrument to achieve uh, long-term sustainable development uh, both of our societies and of uh, our local and regional communities. As we've heard in uh, the past few years, we have witnessed a uh, slowing down in achieving these goals and uh, of course the associations of uh, local governments can give a contribution to make this debate more topical but uh, to achieve concrete results we need uh, a wider institutional coordination and support in this respect i support the proposals in uh, the opinion especially in the part that refers to a stronger involvement of the EU, uh, the strengthening of uh, the uh, uh, capacities of uh, LRA, LRAs, uh, and also the recovery plans, uh, cohesion, and so on. Thank you. Member Josef Kobor, you are the floor for one minute. <clears throat> Dear colleagues, I am a member of the Green Deal working groups in the core, and I have to be very negative. Uh, the SDG and Green Deal in Europe is in very big trouble. Why? It was a taxonomy which was pushed through the European Commission uh, 
uh, and uh, this uh, taxonomy prefers until now gas and nuclear energy as sustainable and environmental friendly uh, last until re renewables enter the distant future because at that time it was about uh, cheap Russian gas and uh, uh, nuclear industry of French and Russia uh, and both failed we don't we know why and now we are in trouble because it is the same construction but much more expensive and uh, uh, consumers can barely pay the bills and is not money about uh, for energy efficiency so we have to change promptly thank you thank you member sari rausio you have the floor for one minute Thank you, dear Mr. President, uh, and all I will speak to in Finnish, since it's possible now. Lämmin kiitos, apulaispääsihteeri Amina Mohamed, todella tärkeä. Thank you to the Deputy Secretary General, um, Ms. Mohamed, for uh, words. There's a big change ahead of us. Um, it's a time of worry, so we need to keep the goal um, in view. As our colleague Andrews has said, uh, the SDG is really the one global objective that we can all work towards. It's a common denominator, the same uh, for all, and we need to work towards it, roll our sleeves up. It's um, not just enough to draw up plans. We need to act as well. To my colleague Rio, I'd like to say thank you very much for your work here. We need to work together on this material. The floor for one minute. Thank you very much, dear President. My city in Hungary, West Prem, is also part of the Global Goals for Cities project. This is a wide-ranging international cooperation aimed at speeding up the implementation of the uh, SDGs and translating them into urban developments. The sustainability goals formulated by the UN, such as poverty eradication, quality education, or protection of terrestrial ecosystems, must be localized and enable local strategies to be defined and implemented and monitored. At the end of the project, the city elaborates a unique integrated action plan focusing on the main issues of the given city. It would be important to the cities to have the opportunity to continue these projects and receive financial support for the elaboration of the goals too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Christoph Ivaniuk, you have the floor for one minute. Bardzo dziękuję. Panie Przewodniczący, Szanowni Koleżanki i Koledzy. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. I think all of us uh, here uh, think different things when we talk about sustainable development. The situation is very different in Prague from in another big city than uh, what it is in diff small villages. So what do we do now for everything to be comparable? We're talking here about an improved life for our citizens. So we need to look about the tragedies we've been faced with recently. War, energy crisis, the pandemic. And all of this has meant that small villages um, a long way away from the big cities are in a struggle for survival, rural areas are really struggling at the moment. And if we want to look after the well-being of the citizens, we really need to take all of this into account. And if we, so we need to build infrastructure to that end. You have the floor for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll speak in Croatian. Since... Uh we from the RAs uh, the, are the local level that is closest to people. We should receive uh, support in educating the public in uh, SDGs uh, that we're discussing here today. But uh, to be able to think about sustainable development, it has to be planned, which means adopting strategic plans and documents with uh, clearly defined goals to sustain sustainable development. In Croatia, local and regional authorities have these documents uh, that contain these goals and measures, but we wonder how aware they are of uh, the importance of this concept. 
the idea of sustainable development is uh, very popular today in the rhetoric in politics, but uh, uh, when uh, we have to transfer that into action, we often fail. Uh, the uh, documents um, very often can uh, not enable us to monitor the uh, development and the progress. This is why we have to ensure such mechanisms and uh, also ensure material resources in uh, that respect because uh, LRAs have uh, few funds, fewer funds than the uh, national level to monitor the progress. Yeah, vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Dass ich noch Thank you, President, for giving me the floor to say something. Mr. Rear, thank you very much um, for your opinion. I think uh, this is something I've already said to you in Econ. We do need to constantly check uh, that we're not straying from the path, and I think that's why your initiative was good. Um, that's already, it's already been said that we'll be, we'll be supporting it. Um, one drop of courage required is the pillar of the social rights to be integrated in all aspects um, of policy. And once again, uh, there's not enough attention being paid to social issues here. Uh, in light of the pandemic, we need to bear that in mind. I don't think we can, as I say, stray from the path. We need to keep our eye on the goal and also think about social, the social dimension. Thank you. Thank you. Member Coughlin, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you, dear President, and to Madam Deputy Secretary General, to MEP by Andrews and to our rapporteur. Thank you indeed for your presentations and to all of those who have taken part in the debate. Robert Schuman, uh, the father of the EU, said the world peace cannot be safeguarded without the making of creative efforts proportionate to the dangers which threaten it. And world peace is being threatened daily by huge threats. And so we do need to grasp this nettle. The Sustainable Development Goals are a blueprint for um, for cohesion, which is really our, our, our aim at the end of the day. I would ask and I would echo our Barry Andrew's call there to formulate a strategy, because without a strategy, there really is no, um, there's no progress. But I would also emphasise the importance of empowering communities within that strategy. Really, we must get down to the nitty gritty here. Many of our communities are taking the initiative themselves um, with, these, with the problems. And I would ask that the European Union would really embrace our, our subsidiarity and empower communities Thank to you. deal with the ideas uh, that are in the Sustainable De Development Goals and the challenges that they raise. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. And now this concludes the interventions from the floor. I will now give the floor to Mr. Andrews. If you have any final remarks to share with us, you have three minutes. Well, I won't keep you. Uh, I want to make two points. First of all, that uh, partnership uh, is SDG 17. So that's why uh, I set up the SDG Alliance in the European Parliament. And this is an informal group drawn from all political families in the European Parliament. And we have 28 members uh, drawn from across uh, the European Union. And we are dedicated to the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. And we set ourselves a series of objectives, most of which we have already achieved. From what I've heard from this debate is the point that was made a number of times, which is the fact that 65% of the objectives in the Sustainable Development Goals require the intervention of local and regional authorities. The point was made by Councillor Power, who was made by many interventions during the course of today. So my second point is to acknowledge the critical role, uh, and this was acknowledged at the very beginning, by the way. In 2015, it was acknowledged... Uh, that the vast majority of implementation would depend on the cooperation uh, of local and regional authorities. And this is more important even than in the European Union, in the United States, where the federal government has taken almost no role in the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, and therefore it relies on governors, it relies on mayors, it relies on regional authorities, and this is true in many regions of the world. So for that reason... I really uh, want to thank you for the invitation to be here today uh, and I want to congratulate Rapporteur Rio and all of the shadows uh, for the work that they put into this. This is a collective effort. Uh, we are off track, uh, but listening to the political will uh, today, it gives me hope and I'm sure everybody else. Thank you, Mr. President.
Thank you, Mr. Andrews. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Now, uh, Ricardo Reis, is that intervened? Yes, just a brief intervention. First of all, to thank all the colleagues for their testimonies. I think that they showed the importance of the SDGs all over Europe and uh, the work that has been done in so many regions and cities in Europe. And uh, obviously what I'll try to do together with the invite chair and other members is to bring this reality to the high-level political forum in July to show the reality in the European Union. Also, I would like to call for uh, the cities and regions that are not doing yet their voluntary reviews to do so because, it's, uh, as it was mentioned several times here today, the single holistic tool that we have to, to look the for, uh, on an integrated basis to uh, our development model. And uh, for that, uh, it's important to share experiences and to share best practices. And I think that all these networks that we have been working with, from the OECD to the CMR to the Platforma to EuroCities, can be an important tool to, to support that work. At the European level, this uh, opinion also brings some uh, specific recommendations that are very important in terms of political terms. To have an SDG strategy, to monitor SDGs more accurately, using clear targets and not just looking at the average evolution. To bring leadership at the highest level and to mainstream SDGs in the European Commission internal governance and budget. Integrate SDGs more thoroughly in a simplified European semester and Europe European Union recovery bringing the SDGs to the National Recovery and Resilience Plans. There has been some surveys that show the lack of connection between the NRPPs and the SDGs, and obviously reinstating the EU multi-stakeholders platform that are some of the recommendations that this opinion brings and that we think are very important. Two final remarks. Um, MEP Andrews already mentioned that, the importance of having financial tools that support the work that is being done in the territories, and also the interinstitutional collaboration by the several organs of the European Union uh, as the Working Party of the Council, as the Social Economy Council, as the Committee of the Regions and the European Parliament together with the Commission. And that is why, together with the, um, the Rapporteur Andrews, we hope to bring these topics to the European Commission for them to happen in the near future. Thank you for our support. Thank you so much. Now we're going to proceed with the vote of the opinion on progress in the implementation of SDGs. I think everybody is already to vote. Now let me dare to say something. Is there any possibility to have a block vote on the amendments? We have 12 amendments. Yes? Good. So we're going to have a block vote on amendments 1 to 9. Who votes against the amendments? Abstentions? The amendments are approved. Now, final vote. Who votes against the, vo the opinion? Abstention? The opinion is approved. Congratulations to the rapporteur and to everyone involved. Congratulations. <laughs> Sir, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Change the setting quickly. Yep.